In this video, I will be creating another Windows Setup Automation package that was requested by one of the viewers of this channel. I'm starting this video from my GitHub page and that's because there are a few bits of information here that I will be using for this video. And I will leave the URL in the description down below. And here you can see the request that I received in my email. As you can see, it contains many actions. I was not able to fit all of them in a single screenshot. So let's click on the first part and here in the request he says that he wants to create two packages one of them for new computers and the second one for old computers that will contain additional action called clean pc that restores windows to the original state and in this video i will be creating a provisioning package that is for new computers also one of the actions that i will be using to automate all the steps in this request does not work with the clean PC action. And this means that if you want to include clean PC inside of this provisioning package, you will have to perform one of the actions manually. Also, one thing to know is that actions that are in red squares, I was not able to add to this provisioning package. And the reason for that is that I don't have the required environment for them. But you can try to add them yourself and they should work just fine. And now I will go through all the actions that I need to automate in this request. The first one is to set the computer name to xente dash and then 8 random numbers. This is a easy one. The next one is to join the computer to Azure Active Directory. And as you can see, this is in red squares. That means that I was unable to add this action to the provisioning package because I don't have an Azure Active Directory that I can use for this video. And the next action that I need to automate is configuring wireless settings. After that, I need to create two administrator accounts with passwords. And this action seems to be easy enough at first, but this action is the reason why the provisioning package is incompatible with the clean PC action. And the reason for that is that to automate all the steps in this request, I need to perform some of the actions in the user's desktop. And to get to the user's desktop, because we're using passwords, I need to use a functionality called auto logon. And it seems that when using auto logon, the clean PC action gets stuck during the computer provisioning process. And to avoid this problem, you could remove auto logon from the package. But this means that you will have to log in manually for the provisioning process to continue. And the other option would be to reset the computer before executing the provisioning package. Anyways, in the next set of actions, I need to perform Windows updates. And here we have another very complicated action and it's to upgrade to Windows 11 if compatible. And this action makes the provisioning package very complicated. Instead, I would recommend performing clean Windows 11 installation. But in this video, I will be performing all the actions as requested. So I will be creating a provisioning package that is capable of upgrading Windows 10 to Windows 11. Anyways, after performing all the updates, we have taskbar configuration. So I need to move taskbar icons to the left, remove chat from the taskbar, remove copilot, disable widgets and to hide task view. And after the taskbar settings, we have few power settings. So I need to disable sleep. I need to set the closed lid action to do nothing. Then I need to remove the default Windows Store apps, configure start menu layout, prevent OneDrive Outlook Home Dev from installing. Then once again, we have hide task view, disable widgets, remove home and gallery from file explorer. And then in the last action set that I have here, I need to configure regional settings. But because I didn't get enough information, I will skip the last three actions. I will only be configuring the time zone and also the keyboard settings. And now let's go to the second part of this request. So it's here. And in here we have this comment saying install multiple software using installation file or chocolatey. What do you recommend for security purpose? And here I will not be recommending anything because I don't want the responsibility that comes with that. But I will talk about chocolatey for a bit. And the main thing that people say about chocolatey that is insecure is the community repository. And that's true, but you can always go to the community repository and inspect the packages that you want to install. And because Chocolatey package is basically a PowerShell script, you will be able to see what actions it is performing and where it gets the installation files from. Also, if you want to be more secure when using Chocolatey, you can create your own private Chocolatey repository and then install the packages that you create for yourself. But this method requires a lot more effort from you because you will have to maintain the repository and also update the packages that you create for yourself. But also this method provides a lot more flexibility because not only that you can create software installation packages, you can also create software configuration packages 
and also Windows configuration packages. And that makes it a very good tool for Windows automation. So basically the security depends on how you're using the tool. Anyways, in this video I will be using Chocolaty for the software installation and I will also be using the community repository. And I will be installing Adobe Acrobat Reader, 7-Zip, Google Chrome, Zoom, Microsoft Office 365 and then OneDrive for business. And as you can see I have a remote PC and Windows Defender in red squares and that's because I don't have the license key for a remote PC and also I don't have the environment for Windows Defender. And after software installation I need to set Adobe Reader as a default PDF reader, Google Chrome as the default browser and also Outlook as the default mail client. And then we have another red square and here I would need to set OneDrive for Business as their backup folder in the computer for desktop, documents, pictures and downloads folders. But once again I don't have the environment for that. Anyways, after that we have more taskbar configuration. Here I need to pin Google Chrome, Word, Excel and File Explorer to the taskbar. And then we need to create desktop shortcuts for Adobe Reader, Excel and Word. And then I need to skip privacy experience. And for the last action we have clean PC, but like I said before, I will not be including it in the package. Now let's go back to the main GitHub page and talk about all the actions that I will be including in the package. As you can see the list is very long and that's because this package needs to be able to prepare Windows 10 computers, Windows 11 computers and also it needs to have ability to upgrade Windows 10 computers to Windows 11 computers if compatible. Also not all settings apply the same way for Windows 10 and Windows 11 and that means that we need to handle settings differently depending on what operating system we have to get the same result in the end. And here you can see the starting point, all actions in here will be executed by the provisioning package in the after the box experience and the provisioning package will create two administrator accounts, admin and admin2. After that it will set the computer name to xente dash and then eight random numbers. After that it will configure wireless settings, disable after the box experience and execute a PowerShell script called ubi dash set ps1. And this script will create another local administrator account that's called provisioning. And I will be using it to execute configuration actions in user's desktop. And after executing all the configuration actions, this user will be removed. And after creating the provisioning user, the script will also configure auto logon for the provisioning user. And this is the action that doesn't work with clean PC. And then the script will create a provisioning folder in C program data directory. Then it will copy a few files from the provisioning package to the directory that it just created. Then it will install Chocolaty, disable privacy experience, disable widgets. Then we have the power settings. So here it will disable sleep and also set the close lid action to do nothing. And the next action depends on the operating system that we currently have. So if we have Windows 10, it will configure run once to execute a script called desktop upgrade PS1. And if we have anything else, then it will configure run once, once again, but this time to execute another script called desktop provisioning. And that's it for the out of the box experience. What happens next depends on our operating system. So here we have actions that will be executed only for Windows 10. And here we have actions that will be executed for Windows 10 and also Windows 11. And this means that no matter what happens in here for Windows 10 computers, they should end up executing all actions that we have in here. Anyways, for Windows 10, run once will execute a PowerShell script called a desktop upgrade. And this script will wait for internet connection. And after the internet connection is detected, it will run Windows 11 upgrade compatibility check. And if no issues are detected, it will create a batch file called autologon in the provisioning folder. And this batch file will contain autologon information for the provisioning user and also configuration for run once to execute a desktop provisioning script, basically the actions that we see here. And after creating the batch file, the script will execute upgrade to Windows 11. And after a successful upgrade, the autologon batch file will be executed. This will configure auto logon and also configure run once to execute a desktop provisioning PS1 script. And like I said before, this part right here will only be executed if no compatibility issues are detected. But if we have a situation where compatibility issues are detected, for example, if the computer does not have a TPM chip, then the script will execute another script called desktop provisioning PS1. 
And that means that no matter what happens in here or what type of operating system we have, the computer should end up executing the desktop provisioning script that we see in here. And this script first will wait for internet connection. It will install a PowerShell module called PS Windows Update. Then using this module, it will install Windows Updates. And after performing Windows Updates, the script will check if the computer requires a reboot. And if the computer requires a reboot, it will once again reconfigure auto logon and also reconfigure run once to execute the same script desktop provisioning. And then it will restart the computer. And this will once again execute the same script. And this means that this part of the script will be executed multiple times until there are no updates that requires a reboot. And after installing all the updates, the script will set the time zone. Then it will set the default applications. So it will set Google Chrome as the default browser, Adobe Reader as the default PDF reader, and Outlook as the default mail client. After that, it will prevent OneDrive Personal from installing. It will pin the taskbar applications. It will also configure active setup to import desktop user registry file. And this registry file will contain taskbar settings depending on the operating system. Also, even though we are configuring active setup to import this file, currently this file at this stage will not exist on the computer or in the package. And that's because this file will be created in the next action set depending on our operating system. So if we have Windows 10, first the script will import Windows 10 start menu layout and then it will create the desktop user registry file with Windows 10 user settings in it. And then for Windows 11, as you can see, we have more actions. And here the script will remove home and gallery from the file explorer. It will create the desktop user registry file, this time with Windows 11 user settings. It will configure the keyboard language, prevent Outlook new and home dev from installing, deploy Windows 11 start menu layout file, and configure active setup to remove Outlook new for each user on the computer. And this last action is mainly for the new Windows 11 24H2 update. And that's because after the new update, Outlook new is pinned to the taskbar for all the users on the computer and removing it with other methods would remove the program, but it would leave the pin on the taskbar. And that means to remove a new Outlook, we need to execute the removal from each user on the computer. And this will remove Outlook from the user profile and also unpin it from the taskbar. Anyways, next we have more actions that apply for both operating systems. And here we have software installation. Like I said before, I will be using Chocolatey for the software deployment and the script will install Adobe Reader, 7-Zip, Google Chrome, Zoom and Microsoft Office 365. And after software installation, the script will remove the default Windows Store applications, create desktop shortcuts for Adobe Reader, Word and Excel. Then it will remove auto logon registry entries and remove the provisioning user. And that's it for all the actions that will be in the provisioning package. Now, before we can start creating the provisioning package, first we need to perform all the actions that you see in this to-do list. And first I need to prepare USB drive with Windows 11 installation files. And I will be using Windows 11 installation files for performing the compatibility check and executing the Windows upgrade. And then I need to create Windows 11 start menu layout file, download chocolate installation file and download all the PowerShell scripts from the GitHub page. And I will begin by creating the Windows 11 installation USB drive. Also, if you want to make one yourself, make sure that you have a USB drive that does not contain any important files on it because the process will format the USB drive and the files will be lost. And to create the USB drive, I will be using media creation tool. And to download the tool, I will use the link that I have here in the GitHub page. So I'll click on the link. This brings me to the Windows 11 download page. And here where we have create Windows 11 installation media, I will click download now. Then I will close this page and go to my downloads folder. Now we have the media creation tool. I will click on it and now we need to wait a bit. Here I will click accept. And here you need to make sure to unselect use the recommended options for this PC and then click next. Here we need to select USB flash drive and click next. Then we need to select the USB drive. I will select this one. This is the only one that is connected to my PC. And then click next once again. And now it's creating the USB drive. Well, first it will download the files and then it will create the USB drive. And while it's downloading, we can 
check the next step and here we need to create the windows 11 start menu layout file and for this step i will go to my vmware workstation and then to one of my windows 11 virtual machines because i will be creating the start menu layout on this virtual machine and before i can start creating the start menu layout that i want first i need to install microsoft office on this machine and the reason for that is that there are Microsoft Office applications pinned to the start menu, but we don't see them until we install Microsoft Office and then sign in to a new user account. And because this virtual machine has Chocolatey installed, I will be using Chocolatey to install Microsoft Office. And to do that, first I will go to my GitHub page and I will copy this command. Then I will go back to the virtual machine. I will open a CMD window. I will run it as administrator. Then I will insert the snippet and I will press enter. And now we need to wait for the office installation to finish. And as you can see, Microsoft Office installation was successful. And even though we have Microsoft Office on this machine, we still don't see the applications in the start menu. And for them to appear, we need to create another user account. And for that, I will be using the net user command and then let's create temp user and let's add add and now let's sign into the temp user and as you can see on this user account we have more applications in the start menu and that means that we can remove them and one very important thing to know when creating the start menu layout that you want is that when you're creating the start menu layout make sure to select unpin from start instead of uninstall because uninstall will remove the application from the start menu but it will leave the pin active so when creating the layout make sure that you always select unpin from start so now i will create the layout that i want and this looks good enough for me i will be deploying the layout that you see here now to get the layout file, first I will go to my GitHub page because here I have the directory where the layout file is located. I will click on the button right here to copy the location, go back to my virtual machine and open file explorer. Then I will insert the location here and in here we only care about the start2.bin file. I will right click on it, select copy and then I will go to my downloads folder and I will place the layout file in here. And now let's check the status on the USB drive. As you can see, the USB drive is ready. So now we can click finish and let's go back to the GitHub page. And the next step is to download the chocolate installation file. And for that, once again, I will use the link that I have here in the GitHub page. This brings me to the chocolate repository. Here we want to click on the release and then scroll down a bit and download the MSI file then let's close this window and then we need to download all the powershell scripts from the github page so let's scroll up and maybe go one page back and here we can see all the powershell scripts that we'll need for the package and the first script that i will be downloading is the ub setups one i will click on it and this is the main script that will be executed from the provisioning package in the out of the box experience and now I'll try to quickly go through all the actions in the script. Here you can see the variables that we need to provide for this script to work. So we need to provide chocolatey installation executable file name. Then we need to provide username and password for the provisioning user. And also the USB name for the USB drive that contains Windows 11 installation files. And here the script will create the local provisioning user and add it to the local administrators group. Here you can see the configuration for auto logon. Then the script will create the provisioning folder in C program data directory. Then it will move few files from the provisioning package to the provisioning folder. Then it will execute chocolate installation. And here you can see the power settings. This will disable sleep and also set the closed lid action to do nothing. Then we have the registry setting for skipping the privacy experience. Another registry setting for disabling widgets. And the next action will depend on the operating system. So for Windows 10 computers, the script will apply this setting that you see here. And here the script will configure run once to execute a PowerShell script desktop upgrade. And then for Windows 11 computers, it will once again configure run once, but this time to execute a PowerShell script called desktop provisioning. 
And the last snippet in here is for applying all the registry settings that we have in the script. Now to download the script, let's click on the button right here and then let's go back to the GitHub page. The next script that I will be downloading is the desktop upgrade one. And this script is only for Windows 10 because it is responsible for upgrading Windows 10 computers to Windows 11. And the script first will wait for internet connection, then it will find the USB drive with the Windows 11 installation files and then it will launch the compatibility check. And after checking for the compatibility, it will output the result. Then here you can see the batch file that will be created. Here we have the auto logon information once again. And then once again, we can see run once configuration for executing the desktop provisioning script. Then if the computer is compatible, it will create the file that you see here and it will launch the upgrade. And if the computer is not compatible, it will just execute another PowerShell script called desktop provisioning. And that's basically it for this script. Now to download this one, let's click on the button right here and go back to the GitHub page. And the last script that I will be downloading is desktop provisioning. Let's click on it. And this is the main script for configuring the computer and also for the software installation. And in this script, you can see a few configuration files. Here we have Windows user registry settings. Here we have Windows 10 user registry settings. Here we have taskbar configuration. Then we have the configuration for default programs. Here we have the Windows 10 start menu layout because the layout that we made here only applies for Windows 11 computers. And first the script will wait for internet connection. Then it will download everything that it needs for PowerShell module called ES Windows Update and then it will install the module itself and then using this module it will install Windows updates then it will check if a restart is required and here you can see the snippet that will be executed if the restart is required and as you can see the script once again is configuring run once to execute the same script desktop provisioning and the reason for that is that we want the script to run multiple times First, it will check for updates, install them, restart, and then it will check for updates again. And this will happen multiple times until there is no more updates to install. Also, once again, we have auto logon information because we need to reconfigure it every time that we restart the computer. Then we restart the computer. And like I said, this happens multiple times until there is no more updates to install. And after installing all the updates, this part will be executed. So first the script here will configure the time zones, then it will create the default program configuration file and also the taskbar configuration file on the computer. And then the script will configure the default applications. After that we have few registry settings. The first one is the configuration for active setup to prevent OneDrive personal from installing. Then we have a few settings for the taskbar. And then we have another configuration for active setup, this time to import the desktop user registry file. Then we have actions that depend on the operating system. And here you can see the configuration only for Windows 10 computers. So first the script will create and also import the start menu layout file. Then it will create the user registry file that is only for Windows 10. And after that, we have settings that are for Windows 11 computers. And in here, the first action is to remove gallery and home from the file explorer. Then it will create the user registry file that is only for Windows 11. After that, it will configure the keyboard settings, copy the original settings to other user accounts. This will prevent home dev and also Outlook new from installing. Here we have the start menu deployment. And then we have a registry setting to remove Outlook new. And the setting is mainly for Windows 11 24H2 update. And then once again, we have settings that apply for both Windows 10 and Windows 11. And the first snippet in here is responsible for applying other registry settings that we have in the script. Then we have software installation using Chocolaty. Here you can see some of the package. The script will install Adobe Reader, 7-Zip, Google Chrome and Zoom. Then we have installation for Microsoft Office, also using Chocolaty, but we don't have it in the list here because I had to provide additional parameters for it. Then we have removal of Windows Store apps. 
After that, we have desktop shortcut creation to create Word, Excel, and Adobe Reader shortcuts on the desktop. And after that, we have a removal of the auto logon information from the registry and also removal of the provisioning user. And that's it for this script. Now to download it, let's click on the button right here. Let's go back to the main page in the GitHub and let's check our downloads folder. As you can see, it seems that we already have all the files that we need to create the provisioning package. And now to create the package, I will go to my Windows Configuration Designer. Here I will click on File and then New Project. I will name the project package. Then let's click Next. Next. Here I will select all Windows Desktop Editions and click Next. And then Finish. And first I will be disabling the out of the box experience. So let's go to the runtime settings, then Ubi, let's select desktop and here for height Ubi, let's select true. And now let's create local administrator accounts. And for that, let's go to the accounts, then users here. Let's enter the first user. So it will be admin. Let's click add. Then let's click on the user here. Let's set password, very secure password. So password five, five. And then for user group, let's select administrators. Let's create another one back to users. And this one will be admin two. Let's click add, select the user, enter the password. And then select a user group administrators. And that's it for the users. And now let's set the computer name. And for that, we need to go to accounts and then computer account. And here let's select computer name. And for the computer name, I will be using a value from a GitHub page, and this will set the computer name to Xiente and then eight random numbers. So let's copy this line, go back to the provisioning package and insert it here. And now I will be configuring wireless network settings. So for that, let's go to connectivity profiles, VLAN and then VLAN settings. Here we need to enter the SSID of the wireless network that we want to configure. In my case, it's let's do automation. Let's click add. Then let's click on the wireless network here. Here for security type, I will select VPA2. And then for security password, I mean security key, let's enter password 55. And also in most cases, you will want to select auto connect to true. And now I will package all the files that I have in my downloads folder inside of this provisioning package. So for that, let's go to provisioning commands, device context, and then let's select command files. Here I will click browse, I will go to my downloads folder. And here I will select the PowerShell scripts, the chocolate installation file, and also the start menu layout for Windows 11. Then I will click open, let's click add here. And now we need to configure the execution for the Ubisoft Up script. Let's click on the command line and let's go to the GitHub page because here I have the line that I will be using. And here, as you can see, we are executing PowerShell setting the execution policy to bypass, then providing the file that we want to execute. In this case, it's ubi set to ps one Then we need to provide the chocolatey executable file name. So the name that we see in the downloads folder here. Then we need to provide a username that we want to create for the provisioning user. In my case, it will be provisioning. Provide the password for the provisioning user and also provide the USB name. So in this case, it's ASD-USB. And it's the name that we see here when we click on the USB drive. And this will help uh, for the scripts to detect the USB drive that contains the Windows installation files or the Windows 11 upgrade. So let's click on the button right here to copy this line, go back to the provisioning package and insert the line in here. And now we can create the provisioning package. And for that, let's go to export provisioning package. Here I will click next because we're using passwords in this provisioning package. It would be best to encrypt this package, but to make this video simple, I will leave this unchecked. Let's click next, next, and then build. Now let's click on the output location. Here we only need the package.ppkg file. So I will right click on it, select copy, go to my Windows 11 installation USB, and I will place the provisioning package inside of here. And the last step is to test this provisioning package and see all the automation that it will be performing. And for that, I will go to my VMware workstation. Here I have this virtual machine. As you can see, this is a clean Windows 10 installation that is also compatible with Windows 11. That means that 
The provisioning package should not only prepare this computer but also upgrade it from Windows 10 to Windows 11. And the only thing that I need to do to execute the provisioning package is to plug the USB drive to this computer, then Windows will detect the provisioning package and start the provisioning process. So to do that I will go to VM and then removable devices, select the USB drive and connect it to this computer. And the provisioning process should start, as you can see it is starting, and now we need to wait and see what's going to happen. And as you can see, the package first started the compatibility checked. It did not find any issues. And now it is starting the Windows upgrade. So now we need to wait a bit more. And as you can see, the Windows upgrade is over. Now it should perform Windows updates and other configuration actions like software installation. As you can see, it already performed Windows updates. It performed some of the configuration and now it started the software installation. So now let's wait for all of that to finish. And that's it, the provisioning process is over. The last action that I need to perform is to press enter here to restart the computer. And this will remove the provisioning user and also the auto logon information from the registry. So let's press restart and wait for the computer to restart. And as you can see, after the reboot, we are not getting automatically signed in. And if I check the user accounts, we can see that I have admin one that requires a password and also admin2 that needs a password. So let's sign in to one of them. And after the sign in, it will take a few minutes for the taskbar settings to apply and also for executing the Outlook new removal. And now everything seems to be ready. The last step for me is to check if I managed to automate all the actions in the request. So let's click on the first part and the first action is to set the computer name to Xent dash and then eight random numbers. Let's open CMD and execute hostname. And as you can see, the computer name is Xente and then eight random numbers. The next action is to configure wireless settings. And because I used Ethernet connection for the provisioning process, the wireless should not be connected, but we can check the configuration by trying to connect and it should automatically connect without asking for the password. So let's go back to the machine, go to the network settings, find the wireless network and let's click connect. And as you can see, it connected without asking for the password. That means that wireless network configuration was also successful. And next I had to create two user accounts, admin and admin2. So for that, let's use the net user command. And as you can see, we have admin and also admin2. So that also worked just fine. Next, we have upgrading to Windows 11. And as you can see, that did work without any problems. After that, we have the taskbar configuration. So moving the taskbar to the left, removing chat, copilot, disabling widgets, and task view. So everything seems to be configured as requested. And next we have power settings. One thing to note is because my computer in the virtual machine is a desktop, I will not be able to demonstrate the closed lid action, but we can see if we have a disabled sleep. So for that, let's go back here. Let's open control panel and then search for power settings. If I go to power options, check plan settings, you can see that all the sleep settings are turned off. Then after that, we have a removal of default Windows Store apps. So let's go back here. Let's go to settings and then apps and install the apps. And as you can see, majority of the default Windows Store apps are removed. 
after that we have custom start menu layout so we can see that we do have the layout that we created in the other virtual machine after that we have prevent onedrive outlook and then home dev from installing as you can see we don't have the personal onedrive installed we don't have the icon in here it is not running in here and also if i check installed apps you can see that we don't have onedrive in here then if i go to system components here we can see that we don't have the uh, home dev installed so everything seems to work just fine also we can check outlook new it's also not here so that's it for this step and then we have high task view disable widgets and also remove home and gallery from the explorer so we don't have the task view and widgets in the taskbar so that worked just fine and also we don't have gallery and home in the file explorer let's go back once again then we have regional settings so like i said i was only configuring the time zone and the keyboard settings and let's check that so let's go to settings time and language and then we need to go to date and time here we can see the custom time zone and also language and regional you can see that we have only the english us keyboard in here and i think that's it for the first part of the request now let's go to the second part here we have software installation i had to install adobe reader 7 the google chrome zoom microsoft office 365 and also OneDrive for Business. So let's check in here. Let's go to Apps, Installed Apps. Here we can see 7-Zip, Adobe Reader. Then we have Google Chrome. Here we can see Microsoft Office 365. Then we have Zoom in here. So everything seems to be fine in here. Oh, I forgot to check OneDrive for Business. And we can see OneDrive for Business in here. Now the second part is to set Adobe Reader as the default PDF reader. Google Chrome as the default browser and Outlook as the default mail client. So for that, let's go to default apps. And if I click on Adobe Reader, you can see it has all the defaults. Now let's go for Google Chrome. Everything seems to be looking just fine in here. We have PDF set to Adobe Acrobat because that was requested. And same goes for mail too. We have Outlook in here. So if I check Outlook, it also seems to be the default mail client. Let's go back in here. Next was to configure the taskbar. So pin Google Chrome, Word, Excel, and File Explorer. And as you can see, we have File Explorer, Google Chrome, Word, and Excel. So this section was executed also successfully. And then the last thing that I need to check is the desktop shortcuts. So it should have Adobe Reader, Excel, and Word. And here we have Adobe Reader, Excel, and also Word. And that's it. It seems that the package was executed successfully. And that's it for this video. Like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And see you in the next one.